now I'm free agent and yeah, but I'm still training because the next opportunity can come and a promoter says, hey, we want to give her a contract, so I have to be ready. I wanted to just quickly touch on a little bit of your background and how you got into boxing, because obviously you're very, very well known in Germany, but we'd love for, you know, to get more eyes on you here. And since you've got a, a management team here. So just tell me briefly about how you got into boxing. I know you came from tennis. You came into the game quite late. Yeah. Give me a kind of brief overview. Yeah, I started with tennis when I was nine. And also, yeah, my coach said maybe she should she should look that she also does a sport beside tennis to get a free mind to see something else what's a little bit similar to boxing. So there was, I think there was dancing, uh, other sport and boxing. So I choose boxing and I went to a couple of training sessions in my gym in Berlin, where was where everything started. And I was talking to my mom afterwards and I said, can you talk to my dad? I want to quit with tennis. I want to start boxing. And my, mom, my mother talked to my father. He was really, really surprised because tennis and then body contact sport like mm. boxing, that's completely, yeah, different. I find it interesting though that <laughs> once obviously that your father was kind of swallowed that new information he was very much behind you in your behind your development and in fact he's played a pivotal role hasn't he in your development he's now really i have to say he's now the biggest woman boxing in general boxing fan ever (laughs) he's supporting me my whole family family supports me the whole time and he's more than happy he said when she wants to box i'm happy when she's happy with it I will uh, support her every in, in everything. So, yeah, and now look where we are. It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. He does realise, though, that it wasn't his idea. It was his wife's idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I think, no, it was, of course, my, it, it was something I wanted to do. I love boxing. I still love boxing and I want to achieve everything what's possible and I want to be world champion, better undisputed world champion. And when you see the beginning and then the way we made as a family, I think it's it's insane sometimes. <laughs> you started, didn't you, at 13, 13 or 14? Yeah, you started. So you did that little transition from uh, tennis. You did your pivot. You came into boxing. Now, you won a couple of national titles, did you not? Yes, I was two times the youngest national champion in German history. I got German national champ in the U19 with 14. <laughs> I think after, after, yeah, after one and a half or two years of boxing. Then I was in the national team, so I have also, I'm two times bronze medalist at the European Championships. I qualified for the World Championships, and after that I was in the national team. Then I had also international tournaments, two times uh, bronze medalist at the Europeans, and I was also in the perspective national um, team for Tokyo 2020. But then I got a good offer from from Team Sauerland, now Wasserman Boxing with with 17. And yeah, then I turned to the pros. <laughs> you're a naturally gifted boxer and obviously you're going to have a lot of people floating around trying to offer you things. With hindsight now, do you wish that you went to uh, Tokyo 2020? It's, it's a dream for every boxer, especially for amateur boxer, to go to the Olympics. We were, they're working every day every day really hard for it and I of course it was a dream and maybe it's yeah still a dream or it is of course but now it's also possible for the pros to go to the Olympics but the hard way is to qualify for the Olympics and yeah maybe when I want I could always say or I could always say yeah I want to try and want to see how how far I come to qualify for the next Olympic Games. But now, for me, the focus is on 
getting back to the ring at the pros. Most people are saying that, you know, alongside with Katie Taylor, who I know is one of your favorites, yeah. helped to kind of garner the interest in professional boxing and at least boost the, the mm -hmm. kind of viewership in the kind of female pros. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised, though, that, I mean, it's really taken off here, <coughs> female boxing, and it has also in America. Are you surprised that your career hasn't blossomed? Because there was so much talk about you in the beginning of your career, and there seem, it seems to have been a stop and start for you. Yeah, of course, in the time where I was not, or I couldn't fight, because I <laughs> it was also a promoter thing. There's still something, or still some things to have, or to sort that we have to sort out with the with our promoter. Now I'm free agent, and yeah, but I'm still training because the next opportunity can come. And a promoter says, "Hey, we want to give her a contract, so I have to be ready for it, of course." And but we we took the time to grow my social media. That's my second business beside boxing. And yeah, you can see I have a really great following. Also, that's also a really hard business. It's really important for me to build a great community. And I think we in a family here, because it's a family business, we made a great job. What I, I think is important to say to anybody listening is, although you have a great, and you are really great on social media, and I think that modern boxers have to have that presence and you are particularly you know your presence is particularly good the sort of stuff that you post but you are not a social media boxer you have the talent I think it's really important to say that you have the talent you have the pedigree you just happen to also have a really really great following um, I really agree. I'm not a social media box. Boxing is my, also, that's my sport. I, I want to comp uh, compete. I want to achieve things in boxing. But of course, I have my social media. It's a second business. But I'm also focusing on my boxing journey because that's also really important. And some people, they forget that's also a really hard business. Beside training, I train twice a day from Monday to Saturday. And yeah, we're still always on our phones and doing videos, reels, doing interviews, podcasts, everything, pictures, creating content for my community. That's also a really tough business. If you're enjoying this uh, conversation, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when we drop new content. See, I know a little bit about social media. <laughs> Whoa, that was great. Being a content creator myself, it's a lot of work. And and trust me, I don't even do half of what you do. I think you kind of probably have already answered this question, but I was going to ask you that, you know, given that the, the pro scene has taken off for females over the last few years, you know, have you been frustrated that you've kind of been sitting on the sidelines or actually... Has it allowed you to perfect your craft, like you say, build that following? And actually, is it the right time now for you to kind of explode onto the scene? Of course, now now it's a great time for me. I I also said this year I want to go back or I want to stand in the ring again and maybe to make some two or three fights. I think in the past, of course, it's always frustrating for a boxer when he can't compete and also for me because I want to show myself I want to show how much I developed and but of course it's it's not possible you have to have the right promoter on, by your side and but I think in the next weeks months there will come a great opportunity I don't know I have the feeling there's something coming and now I have <laughs> and so do I <laughs> so I have a great management now by my side and I'm really looking forward to what's coming in the future, of course. <laughs> so we've, you've briefly touched on your, your management. You've just recently signed with uh, Summit Sports Management. Mm -hmm. I've been aware of you for a few years, but it feels different. Although, you know, Wasserman have mm -hmm. shows here and you have fought here, something about this feels different, that they are willing to kind of really put the muscle behind their new talent 
what factors influence your decision to sign with Summit Sports and and how do you believe that they can enhance your career moving forward? Well, my contract with 258 expired, of course, and we decided in the family, it's always a family decision, we decided to not renew the contract with 258 because I'm always looking also for that extra spark because the boxer has also a really short career. So we had a few chats, some we were texting with a few companies. And for me, it was really clear in the beginning, I want to work with Summit Sports. For me, it's also really important to have a, the feeling of a family environment. And I already had the feeling in the beginning with Summit Sports. And I think I have the best guys by my side now. I find it interesting that you <laughs> really, you know, stamp the importance of that Although you're the athlete, it is a team effort to get you where you're going. And I'm just wondering, having, having a lot of experience, shall I say, in boxing, is that, all, where I can see that that's a help, is it a hindrance in the sense that maybe promoters or management feel intimidated that you guys come as a unit and it's like they can't possibly pull the wool over your eyes? Let's just put it like that. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's really important, especially as a as the yeah athlete, that you have the right people by your side. That you have, I have a great family. We are working here together as a team. Also now, for me, it's also like I said, important that I have the great great management, a management I can trust, and then it's also important to have then the right promoter by my side it's also really important to share the same vision like me and my family that we have all the same vision now only the promoter is missing of course but I think we will we will get that fixed in the next month you know what your part is in all of this and you're obviously somebody that keeps working you're not expecting anything to drop in in you know in your lap Yes, people might see the social media, but all of that work, all of those drills, keeping motivated, all of that, you seem to understand that that's your job and I'm and I'm going to be dedicated. Where does that come from? Where does that sense of dedication, hard work, perseverance? Because it appears to me you've always had that from a young age. I want to achieve something in that sport. I commit I'm committed to the sport. I want to I think it's also I want to prove myself I'm really I'm really talented but I'm also working hard for it. Talent is not only I how do you call it talent is not the only thing you have to work hard as a talent and of course talent and and a work hard uh, work how, how do you call it work harding person that's a great combination that's a great mix. And yeah, I do this every day. Of course, you have your ups and downs. That's normal, especially as an athlete. But I want to prove myself, hey, I can achieve great things in boxing. I, I want to see myself holding the belts up. That's really for me a dream. And I'm really giving my best and I'm working every day hard for it to achieve that goal. And now with the new signing with Summit Sports last week, I'm more than motivated and to put everything in and giving my best. It's great to hear you talk of, yes, talent isn't enough. And as a, as a coach, I, it just, in fact, there's the saying that if you have someone that's super talented versus somebody with mediocre talent who's willing to work, they will surpass the talent every time. I think what's dangerous for people your opponents let's say is you have the talent but you're also doing the hard work it's like when that is dangerous is a dangerous combination when you're talented and you're not working hard for it and you're just relaxing there's coming someone around with he's maybe not really ta- not talented like me but he's working hard he <laughs> yeah he's definitely yeah he's one how do you call it one step Always. Better than you. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Well, he's he's the winner in the ring then. Talented and hardworking person that's... It was danger. It's dangerous <laughs> and unstoppable. <laughs> it's true. I love it. I love it. Honestly, 
I understand that you've been talking to a lot of promoters. So can you share any insights into any discussions you may be having or what you're actually looking for in a promotional team? Because you've you've obviously had you've had the experience of working with promoters, but now you've also you've got bar, you've got a bargaining chip, really. It's not just the talent. You have the social media following. So does that kind of give you a little bit more power? Um, of course, with the great following, I have a good stand, of course. And But at the moment, we had a few talks with some promoters, but I think it's not on my management to do the last, the last steps. Is it an you... older man or a younger man at the helm? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is oh. one called Frank... <laughs> And the other one called Eddie. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you can tell what you can tell We're, me off camera. I hope that we can sort that out the problem with the promoter. I'm loving what I'm hearing because I think in this day and age, and maybe it's because I'm a different generation, I feel that some people don't think that they have to work hard, that it's just going to be handed on a plate. You look at people like Devin Haney, you look at people like Katie Taylor, they've all put the time and the effort and the work in as kids. Yeah. Do you, even even Garcia, you know, they didn't just arrive and become, you know, famous and talented. And and it just appears to me that you have the same mindset as th those fighters that I've just mentioned. And I think also now with my new management, I have like Adam Smith by my side now who's mentoring and guiding me yeah. now, my, guiding my career now. And I think I have the best man by my side now where I can learn a lot of things. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Also with new partnerships and stuff. Of course, I'm really happy and lucky to have this kind of endorsement ships. And yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a lot of hard work, of course. <laughs> Are there any other fighters that are on the Alish hit list? Of course, some potential fights in the future, especially in the featherweight division. I can't say anything more because yeah, I have to go back to the ring. That's for me the first thing I have to do. And then, of course, I'm focusing from fight to fight and I can't look into the future which opponent I can my English sometimes <laughs> but to be honest I think one yeah. of the great things is you've got age on your side and so actually it doesn't matter whether I mean obviously you want to get cracking but it doesn't really matter from a perspective of us as an audience we can see you grow we can see you mature as a fighter we could I mean I've seen you change in the last sort of three or four years completely different fighter stronger more yes. spiteful you know I mean you've always had the technical ability and and I do everybody tune in and you, you've got to go on uh, to YouTube or whatever and have a look at some of your you know fights and I think it's important to watch some of the early fights versus now your accuracy your timing your distance I love a technical fire I've got to say you appear to be spiteful in there although you seem very nice now you've got the power I think and I think all of these things and I'm not saying this to blow smoke up your back I, I genuinely believe when you've got all of those pieces together and you put it in and you mix it up, that is a, a, a fan-friendly type of fighter. Yeah, that's nice. That's really, that's, I agree. At the end, it's, you have to put every piece together to have the whole and then it's even more perfect. But I think it's important for me to get more fights, to, to get this ring IQ, and because it's of course it's different when you do normal training you spar against some guys uh, in training but it's completely different when you when you have a fight of course i have not really 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 much fights also in the amateurs i only had 33 fights and now now in the pros nine fights so yeah that's important listen it's been an absolute pleasure you are um, a remarkable young woman and I think you know it's just it's just great to see how much work that you're putting in and you know that you know where you want to go and I, you know I really respect that I really do